This video summarizes the results of an experiment to determine whether or not more spin can be applied to the cue ball by swooping, swiping, or pivoting the cue during the stroke. Here's the setup for the experiment. An elephant practice ball is used for checking tip contact points on the ball after each shot. Rulers are taped to the rails to ensure accurate aim on the first cushion and to measure the angle change due to side spin at the second cushion. The cue is kept as level as possible during most of the tests and a consistent speed is used in any comparisons made. Let's start by demonstrating a swoop stroke. The cue is aligned center ball and the desired amount of tip offset and spin is created during the stroke with a sideways motion of the tip. Here's a view from behind. The swoop can be done completely with the arm or with the help of the wrist as demonstrated here. Bridge length can have a big effect on the results of a swoop stroke. With a very short bridge, the amount of swoop must be significant to apply the desired amount of spin. But doing so dramatically changes the effective aiming line of the shot. Some people might think they are getting more spin due to the swoop, but in reality the cue ball is actually being delivered in a different direction. With a longer bridge, not as much swoop is possible, so the cue ball heads closer to the originally intended direction since the cue is not being pivoted very much. In any comparisons of spin, we need to make sure the cue ball is targeting the same spot with each shot. We'll show how to do this later. Now let's compare a swoop stroke to a straight stroke with the same cue direction and tip contact point. Here's the swoop stroke first. Notice how the aim is off a little due to the pivoting motion of the cue, causing the cue ball to miss to the left of the target on the cushion. Here's the tip contact point for the swoop stroke. Now we will pivot the cue before the stroke using the same bridge length and shoot for the same tip contact point. This approach is called a pre-stroke pivot, or backhand English. Note that the direction the cue ball headed was slightly different than the swoop stroke, with the cue ball hitting the cushion a little closer to the aim point. The swoop stroke hit very close to the two marker, and the backhand English straight stroke hit just inside of the two. This results in a slightly different angle into the first cushion. Also, the sideways motion of the tip with the swoop stroke can impart slightly more spin to the ball for a given tip contact point. We'll look at this more later. The swoop stroke sent the cue ball at about the 8th mark on the second cushion, and the straight stroke ended up closer to the 7th mark. Because of the slight aim difference on the first cushion, and the extra spin imparted with the swoop, it might appear that the swoop stroke can impart more spin to the cue ball, but as we'll see later, this is not the case. This illustration compares a swoop stroke to a straight stroke. Both of these shots create the same effective tip offset, and the same amount of spin on the cue ball. The cue ball also heads in the same direction for both shots. With the swoop stroke, the cue is aiming more to the right at contact, and the actual tip offset from center is less as compared to the straight stroke. However, the sideways swooping motion effectively changes the direction of the cueing force, thereby creating a larger effective tip offset from center. With the straight stroke, the aim is slightly different along the cue ball direction, ignoring cue ball deflection and the tip offset from center is the same as the effective tip offset with the swoop stroke. Again, both of these strokes result in the same cue ball direction and the same amount of spin. Here's a closer look at the backhand English approach, an alternative to swooping. This is Dave Gross, a top regional player who offered to help me with the experiments. Thanks, Dave. Again, you first line up for the desired line of aim of the shot. Then you pivot the tip to the desired amount of spin. This changes the aim for the shot, but the pivot will help compensate for squirt or cue ball deflection created by the off-center hit. Finally, you stroke straight along the new cue direction. In this case, the amount of aim compensation created by the pivot was too much, causing the cue ball to head left of target. If a higher cue ball deflection shaft were being used, this aim might work, but with this cue, we would need to use a longer bridge length to provide less pivot correction for squirt. Here it is again, uninterrupted. And here's a look from behind.
Again, the final stroke is straight along the pre-pivoted direction. When doing comparative tests, it is very important to use as level a cue as possible to minimize swerve effects and to strive for tip contact points at the same heights, ideally on the horizontal center line of the cue ball. If a downward swoop is used or if the tip is aimed below center, bottom spin will be imparted, causing drag action on the cloth that slows the cue ball without reducing the side spin. This increases the effect of the side spin and will widen the angle off the cushion. Here's an example. Again, the effect of side spin is much greater with below center hits. Here's an example of the effects of cue elevation. The more one elevates the cue above level, the more the cue ball will swerve, changing the incoming angle into the cushion. The downward hit, especially if below center, also intensifies the effect of the side spin due to drag action. Here's an exaggerated example with large cue elevation. The cue ball is fairly close to target, but the swerve and drag effects increase the effect of the spin, creating a much larger effective angle change off the cushion. Again, in any comparison, we need to make sure these effects are not at play by keeping the cue tip on the horizontal center line of the cue ball and by keeping the cue as level as possible on every shot. The last set of tests involved attempting to create as much spin as possible with both a swoop stroke and a straight stroke. The cue was kept as level as possible with each shot, with almost no clearance above the rail, and the goal was to hit the cue ball on the horizontal center line as close to the miscue limit as possible. The tip contact point was checked after each shot. The 11 and 13 balls were placed to ensure an accurate hit on the first cushion. With an accurate hit, the cue ball narrowly misses the 13 on the way in, and with significant spin, the cue ball narrowly misses the 11 on the way out. Again, the main goal is to determine if more spin can be created with a swoop stroke as compared to a straight stroke. I threw out any attempts that did not have close to a horizontal centerline hit on the cue ball, were not at a consistent speed, or did not hit the first cushion at the same spot. I also tested a high squirt cue with a soft tip to see if the results differed from a low squirt Predator Z2 with a medium hard tip. I took 25 to 30 shots with each set of tests, and I'm only showing the top four shots from each group. Here's the best of the non-swoop shots with the low squirt cue. In this set of tests, the best of the four best was significantly larger than the other three. I'm not sure exactly why, because I never came close to that with any other shot in any of the tests. I probably just hit the cue ball as close to the miscue limit as possible, with a good part of the tip hitting a good part of the ball, and maybe I cheated the aim to the left a slight amount, and maybe I had a slight downward motion with the cue, creating slight draw and swerve effects demonstrated earlier. Regardless, for comparison purposes, I decided to average only the two middle values of the top four within each set of tests, because they are a more representative average of the best. Here, the average is 9.6. I'll summarize all of the results at the end. Here are the best of the non-swoop shots with the high deflection cue. Notice how the aiming line is very different than with the low deflection shaft, to account for the larger amount of squirt or cue ball deflection. Here's where the cue needed to be aimed with the low deflection shaft, and here's the line necessary with the high deflection shaft. Again, here's the best four of the 25 to 30 shots. Now here's the best of the swoop strokes, using the low deflection shaft. 
Again, notice how the aiming line is very different from the straight stroke aim. Here's where the cue needed to be aimed with the straight stroke, and here's the line required for the swoop stroke. The aim needs to be to the right a little to compensate for the swoop motion to the left. Also, as illustrated earlier, the tip contact point can't be quite as far out on the ball since the swooping motion changes the effective tip offset from center. It was very difficult to push the miscue limit and be consistent with the swoop stroke, but here's the best four of the 25 to 30 shots. Here's a summary of all of the results. First of all, the averages for the low deflection and high deflection shafts were pretty much identical, given the margin of error in this experiment. An LD shaft cannot create more spin, like some people think. With the swoop stroke, I was not able to create quite as much spin as with the straight strokes. It should be possible to create the same amount of spin, but it is much more difficult to be consistent and accurate with the swoop stroke. However, unlike some people think, a swoop stroke cannot create more spin than a straight stroke. As illustrated and described earlier, for any swoop stroke, it is possible to create the equivalent shot of the same cue ball direction and spin with a straight stroke. Now, for some people, there still might be some possible advantages to a swoop stroke. Firstly, if using backhand English, pivoting before the stroke can be awkward, uncomfortable, or unnatural to some people. For one, the pivoting points the cue in a direction different from where you want the cue ball to head to compensate for cue ball deflection. This might not look right to some people. Also, the pre-stroke pivot can require a shift in stance while down on the shot, which some people might not like. Some people prefer aiming center ball in the direction they want the cue ball to head and then swoop to apply English. If the bridge is at the right distance from the cue ball for the given shot speed, distance, and conditions, and if the swoop speed is right compared to the forward speed of the shot, then the swooping motion will cancel cue ball deflection and the cue ball will head in the desired initial cue direction. Also, as shown in the diagram earlier, a swoop stroke allows one to hit the cue ball closer to center to create a larger effective tip offset. This might also be more comfortable for some people. The main disadvantage of a swoop stroke is that it can be difficult to control, and in general, the shot speed and amount of spin won't be as consistent and accurate. It can also be difficult to apply near maximum spin due to a greater risk of miscuing with less control. A straight stroke at the desired equivalent tip offset position with appropriate aim will be much more accurate and consistent for most people. And as the experiment showed, the swooping motion really provides no benefit in terms of spin generating capability. Whichever method you use, you will always need to adjust your aim for different shots to compensate for the squirt, swerve, and throw that comes with using side spin. For more information, see the English resource page in the FAQ section at billiards.colostate.edu.